What a weird topic, am I right? You're probably looking at the title and thinking, it must be clickbait. But no, like Nintendo is actually getting screwed in two different ways. It's pretty sad, but we need to talk about it. So good morning Mario and good morning Switch fans. I think you're gonna find this very interesting for good and bad reasons, all right? Nintendo is getting screwed over and it's two different ways, all right? One is by leakers and two is by companies, company, companies. So I'll, I'll fill you all in. Make sure to hit that like button. If you enjoy the show, let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below and let's roll into it. A couple of things I wanna to touch on first, TMNT got its reviews and boy oh boy did people love that game. Also, I really loved that game. I had a ton of fun with it. Posted a full review on the channel this morning, so check that out if you're interested. The devs were asked if they'd consider doing DLC because the game's probably gonna sell really well. It's climbing up the eShop charts, the reviews are stellar, and they said no DLC, but then they also said never say never. So I think if this does sell really well, they would absolutely consider it, and I'd be all about it because I've already beat the game and I want more. It's if you have any nostalgia for Turtles, it's great. But anyhow, let's also talk about a game that I hope is great, which is Splatoon 3. Now, I have been critical of Splatoon 3 as of late because they've really shown no reason why it exists. Why is it Splatoon 3? Why is this not just, oh, we're putting Splatoon 2 out again with a fresh coat of paint? Because that's all they've shown is paint. Now, today they really dove into the paint, but I do like this one. And obviously, I think we're going to get more at the coming June 29th Nintendo Direct, but... This is a pretty sweet post because they showed off a bunch of styles, profiles, and super sweet color schemes for the Inklings. And I have to applaud Nintendo for creating some bomb characters. Man, oh man, Mario looks the same in just about every adventure. Link at least changes his colors. But the Inklings, they have fashion better than maybe anybody in video games. And I do find that fun. So let's show a little love to Splatoon 3 and hopefully they can back it up with great gameplay in the next couple of weeks. Because if not, the clothes ain't gonna cut it for you. Appearances aren't everything. Um, first appearances, some people say are everything, but in this case, it could be the third appearance if we finally do get a really good trailer sometime this month. So I told you Nintendo is getting screwed. Let's dive in. One way they're getting screwed is by a super rare, weird, in-depth, unlike, I mean, this leak is just really really intense okay so you might remember yesterday i talked about a new fire emblem game that nintendo insider emily rogers had talked about saying it's been done for over a year this game involves emblems it's got a character with red and blue hair their mama is a dragon uh, it's kind of like merging themes from different past fire emblem games summoning favorite heroes of yore nate drake said yeah this game's been done for over a year nintendo's sitting on it but then today is where i think nintendo got a bit pushed over the edge like this to me goes too far because somebody just straight up posted screenshots from the game now they could be fake but people are saying they look very real and they really do reflect what emily and other rumors about the fire emblem games were stating and someone just straight up posted these okay it's one thing to like hint at a game tease a rumor but straight up just breaking any sort of trust between whoever this person is, Nintendo, and just kind of like a code of ethics, I think goes too far. I will not be showing the screenshots in this video because I don't like that. All right, you can find them. They're out there and they do look pretty legit. They do have a character with red and blue hair, but I think that's a bit much. Like this is probably gonna be one of Nintendo's surprises at the next Direct and it's been taken away. The Last of Us was taken away from Summer Games Fest, even though that was, I guess, less of a surprise. We'd heard about that for so long. And apparently this game has been done for over a year. And so some people are like, well, they should have released it if they didn't want things to leak. But it's really nobody's right to leak these screenshots. Emily Rogers thinks that maybe they're from a Chinese localization of the game. The bottom line is Fire Emblem New 2022 is very, very real. The game is very, very done. And it is looking like we're gonna find out about it very, very soon. But I do find it to be a bummer that somebody had to push it this far. We've had a lot of pushing things this month with people like breaking their trust and oh, trying to find loopholes through NDAs and embargoes and things. No, just don't do that. Like if you're an insider and you've heard something or you wanna tease something, that's fine. I, I, don't, I don't like this. I think it steals thunder from Nintendo. I don't think it's very fair to them. And I do feel like they get screwed over a bit because now this moment in the direct has kind of been zapped 
of a lot of its enthusiasm. The best way you can keep the momentum going for yourself is not to look at these screenshots and be surprised by the finished product and whatever Nintendo, how they choose to present it to you. But I don't, I didn't like this. I mean, I guess it confirms the game, which is good. New Fire Emblem is coming, mainline Fire Emblem is coming, Three Hopes isn't the only hope for the franchise, but it, it probably shouldn't have happened this way. It, it probably really shouldn't. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree. Do you think screenshots is like pushing it too far? Somebody should be in big trouble here. I wanna know how you feel about it and uh, let me know in the comments. But that is not all because Nintendo got screwed over in another way and some may say a bigger way. I'll say a bigger way, okay? Because this sucks. It's been happening more and more and now this one, I don't know, this kind of feels like maybe the death knell for this subject in 2022. Over the weekend, we saw a new trailer for Marvel's Midnight Suns, which is a super sick XCOM style Marvel game with cards and favorite characters in really cool outfits. You get to make your own hero and you get to go into the mansion and interact with characters. It just looks great. It looks awesome. It's right up my alley and I think they'll nail it. But we won't be playing it on Switch, at least not for a while. I am so done with Nintendo getting the short end of this. What happens is they announce that these games are coming out day and date on all platforms. They show a Switch logo at the start. Remember, they did this for Dying Light 2. They did this for Midnight Suns. They did this for Life is Strange. And then all of those games get mysteriously pushed. And it's when it's close to coming out, they're like, oh, by the way, Switch version ain't coming. And I think the developers know the Switch version ain't coming. I, I think at this point, it's so recurring. I don't think this is like a coincidence. Now, Life is Strange, to their credit, they got that game out pretty quick. It was like a month or two later. Dying Light 2, to their discredit, haven't said anything. That game came out months ago now, and they were saying, oh, the Switch version by summer. We've heard nothing. I don't even know when that's coming, if it's coming. And it's a cloud version anyway, so whatever. But Midnight Suns was going to be a cartridge version. This is going to be 2K doing some good 2K stuff because they put Bioshock Borderlands XCOM on the platform. Put this on there too is an exciting third-party release and it's out in October. That's like a great holiday get for the Switch, but no more. In fact, in their trailer, they didn't even show a Switch icon. PR had to be asked by different outlets, what's going on with the Switch version? And they said, oh, it will be available at a later date. So they confirmed that it still is in the works, which I guess is good. But I think the problem here is the publishers. I think they see the prize that is the Switch audience. And I think they see that, ooh, we can get people really excited for our game if we say it's coming to a platform that has 100 million people that could possibly get it. That's a really great uh, demographic to target, right? And so they say it's coming, but I bet the devs are like, there's no way. We can't get this on PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, all that stuff, and Switch and PC, there's just no way, right? First of all, that's a lot to do. Second of all, the gap is too large. The gap between PS5 and Switch right now is too large. And the best thing about a new Switch, whenever that does happen, is that hopefully this gap shrinks, inevitably it will, and hopefully it allows for these situations to stop happening. Because now Midnight Suns, for, for my purposes, is not a Switch game. I mean, eventually, maybe one day, probably 2023, because this is October, I don't think they get it out in the next month. So this is now a game that everyone will play on other platforms. And then when it does come to Switch, they'll be like, oh, the sales aren't very good. Well, it's because the game has been out and anyone that wanted to play it already played it elsewhere. So many people do have multiple consoles nowadays or a PC and there's opportunities and people don't want to wait. So why they choose to screw over Nintendo and the Switch user base, I don't know. Again, I think it's either it takes too much time and too much money. The gap is too large. I guess maybe these things just don't sell well enough for them to prioritize. Like you're probably gonna sell more copies on PC, PS5 and Xbox, like definitely, than you want on Switch. So that gets sort of the, the runt end of development. Like, okay, we'll get to it if we can. And, and development is hard. Games are tricky, bugs occur, I understand. Things are tough right now with work from home and still pandemic problems. And, and you know, the industry's just been in a tough spot. But then don't announce it. I feel like it's such a slap in the face. And I'd love to know how Nintendo feels about this. Like, how do they feel when they're like, oh, we're getting Dying Light 2 and Life is Strange and we're getting Midnight Suns and Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy, I feel like that legacy is already sealed. They did it with Gollum too. Warner Brothers did it with Gollum too. I, I don't think Hogwarts Legacy comes out. If it does, I will be shocked. That game drops in November, right? And it's supposed to come to Switch, a massive game. Like that to me is way more difficult to port over than Midnight Suns. 
probably going to be a cloud version anyways, and I probably bet it does not come. I, I bet that that does not hit this holiday season Hogwarts. I bet that's a 2023 game. I mean, if it does, great. I'm all for it. But this has happened too often. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, whatever, shame on me. And, and I'm not going to be fooled for a fourth time this year. Life is strange. Dying light, midnight suns, Gollum. Oh, fifth time. Five big third-party games coming to Switch. And it looks like not any of them are going to hit day and date as intended. That's such a win when we see it. It gets us so excited. It's a reason to, like, believe in the Switch being a universal machine. And whatever the reason, it just... It sucks, and, and it does feel like Nintendo gets screwed over in this way. And this was a year where I thought, okay, third parties, like, they're really bringing some big stuff day and date. And that's super important to me, at least. I don't know about you, but, like, I love when it's day and date. I don't want to wait six months to play these games. So, it stinks. I don't know. I'm really excited for Midnight Suns, but I'm not waiting to play it on Switch. Like, if the game's great, I'll, you know, maybe pick it up again on Switch to have it portably. Now I got a Steam Deck too though, so it's like I could just play it there and not have to wait and have better performance, better graphics, and it's probably not a cloud version. So let me know how you feel about this. Like, either don't announce it or do better. It's really the bottom line. <laughs> really the bottom line. All right, enough of that. Let's breathe it out. Make sure you're all having a wonderful, safe, happy, healthy, positive day out there. I love and appreciate you so much. Thank you for watching, and until next time, before any other screenshots leak or any other games get pushed back, have a wonderful day. Switch Force, out.